Hello everyone, welcome to this little video, or might be quite a big video by the time we finish, where we're going to turn this very dilapidated seat into something more, hopefully like this, that's one that I did 18 months ago. So I managed to get the four, I think there was four um, seat covers on there, the original, uh, the previous owner had fitted over time. The bottom part, which I've already ordered a piece for this, because I already knew this was quite badly damaged and I didn't fancy my ability to repair it that well. I had felt that this back piece, this, I'm talking just about the material at the moment, just the covers, um, I thought this was going to be okay. There's a little bit of beading come off here. I haven't ordered one of these, and as long as I don't find anything disastrous around the back, I might see if I can steal some pieces off this bottom piece, some beading, and perhaps make that acceptable. And they're both going to have to go in the washing machine to just to lift the colours out and the stains out of them. Obviously, all the all the padding's gone, which is what I've also ordered. So I've got a pad, I've got some padding for the back of there coming, some padding for there. Um, previously on the old one, I money I got all the framework powder coated because on that captain's chair pad, the frame's quite visible, but on this chair the frame's not so visible. So if it does, if it all looks like this, which isn't too bad, I'll just go with it rather than paying that sort of 40, 50 more, another 40 or 50 quid to get all these parts powder coated. Um, but we won't know until we get further into it. So, Right, we've managed to get the chair nearly all the way forward. It's quite tight, I'm having to actually just tap it at the back with a hammer whilst putting my hand underneath the front to re reduce them, to um, engage the release mechanism. But what's eventually going to happen is, as if you come down here, for those that haven't taken these off before, eventually this piece is going to come into contact with this piece. Oh, can't see it, there we are, this piece. We're going to come into contact with this piece and the seat will be at its maximum forward position. So if we want to remove the seat, we just have to lift that, it's being loaded. And we can just keep sliding the seat forward and it will come completely off its runners. Right guys, the seat is out as you can see, it's gone. These are all the old hairs from the old fibre mats originally. And we're going to put something very similar back in. Um, something, I think they're made by Wolfsburg West. We bought them a while back. I can't remember where I got them from. Loads of places sell them. You know, that's what we're going to replace this with. So I'm going to have to tidy all this up later on. It looks like the metal is in pretty... Good order, if I give that a wipe, looks a lot new under there. So well, that's going to clean up lovely. The only reason it was a bit tight, I think, is just the build up of those sort of hairs. Coconut, coconut stuff, I think it is. People call it horsehair, but it's not horsehair, it's coconut. Um, tidy that up a bit. I shall lift this up and make sure there's nothing nasty hiding under there. Tidy it all up. Anything I find that's not right will be um, rubbed back to metal and treated. So that when the seat goes back on, I ain't got to worry about it for a decade. And then this is just the underside of the seat. You can see this is in pretty good order. A little bit, slight little bit of rust there. So I might not get to the extreme lengths of powder coating this. I might just clean it up, maybe just tickle it with a black spray can in places where it looks rough. Or well, certainly in places where people are going to see it. The springs don't look too bad at all. A little bit of rust on them, but I mean, it's just surface rust. It's really, really good, good order, really. <clears throat> so, I'm just in my back garden here, and I just wanted to show you how we take, we start off with the back cover. We could take the headrest off first, but the headrest doesn't want to come off because it's seized on, and I'll find it's easier to unseize it by <clears throat> getting in under here. See these little metal tabs, it's got a very sharp point on them. Straighten them out. So, you don't want to snap them off. Okay, there's one there, another one here, sorry, here, there's one here, and there's one here. So, I'm just going to straighten them out now. Right, welcome back, guys. I've got these all straightened out now. 
Now what these do is they are metal tabs that are connected to the frame. They've got sharp points on because they pierce through the material. But in the back of the material you can just see it poking through there where it's worn. There's a metal rod. So they go behind the metal rod and that's what keeps the tension in the back. So you, you don't want to break these off if you can help it because you've got nothing to tension it with. Um, I've decided I'm going to put a new back piece on. I've just, uh, just uh, ordered it online. Just be careful because they make two. They make one where the back only comes down to here. They make one where the back comes to here. Um, I've, you know, apparently one's for the passenger side, one's for the driver side, but I've gone for both mine like this. Both my, both my originals were like this, so I'm going to stick with them like this. I don't know if I'm going to need to keep this bar, so I'm going to keep, I will keep it. I should hope the new one comes with it, but it might not. So what you've got to do is you want to get this off now, and I might have to do this off camera. Is you've got to you've got to force this bar over the top of these clips. Like that. There you are. So I'll get all them off. They're all going to come off really quickly now. I've got those two off. These two come off really quickly. It's going to be really dirty in here, which is one of the reasons why I'm doing it in my back garden because I'm just sweep up the lawn. But there, look at this. This is a, this is a, there's a broken down 40 years of 40 years of it. So also now note that the here, if you look at the pin, it's going through the played material which is the other side of the back and it's also there's another bar you just about to see it there it's not visible because it's not burst through so it works the same principle so you've now got to I don't know if I can do that on camera with it I've got to pull that up and over as well on all of them again trying not to break those pins I think you get the idea then that means that's free then I can push that back through there and I can slide this down the body I just remembered that you've really got to take the back off to make life easier so to go in order to get the back off you've got to get into here this if you've still got your plastic piece on a lot of them are missing you just literally pull it off this direction there's a tab there which goes into that hole there so you just pull them off that way not a problem we need to get some allen keys and take these big bolts out here there's one on the other side as well so, there's also a plastic piece on the other side this more triangular one he just comes on off by striking in from underneath very gently and just slides into position so we've got to get them allen keys out of there all right eight mil allen key required for these um they're very very tight on mine i think the threads are dried out a bit it's been 40 years so you can see there's marks on the end of there i'm having to strike it with a hammer to get it off but it is coming off slowly it's just starting to come away from there finally got him out he was very tight i don't know why he just looks a bit there's a lot of crap in the end of them threads they're probably just a bit dirty i'll soon tidy them up so it just come out you just you just gotta bear with now just something to know i've decided that i'm not using this back cover i'm not using this bottom cover so that's why it's on like a dirty floor and a bit scuffy and roughy and ragging it around on this sort of uh, I might damage it so if you're trying to reuse them you might want to put a piece of cardboard down or something and just be aware that if it's if yours is as old as mine you're going to get all this for now as I'm hitting it with a hammer and moving it around you know it's all going to come out it's just something to be aware of well I've got both the bolts out now so it should just just with one hand just lifts off you can see how much it's faded from the original colour there. That's going to make our, our lives a whole lot easier now when we're dealing with trying to get this off of here and that off of there, which for the sake of two bolts, it's no brainer. All right, guys, welcome back. I'm just starting to take the cover off this back piece. I've loosened that off there and I've loosened that off there so we're not on these spikes. Now, things to watch out for these spikes are lethal. Catch your hands, already caught my hand there. And I want to keep the headrest, and the headrest on mine is 40 years old and it's quite brittle and cracky. So I've just got the old one of the old seat covers and just wrapped it around the head so it's not getting damaged. When you try and pull this, or what I want to do is try and take it off from the top, like taking off a t-shirt, you know, lifting it up over your head. Um, but it's quite tight. 
not a problem for me because if I rip it, taking it off, I'm replacing it. But if you're not replacing it, you have to be careful. And when we put the new one on, that's something that we'll find. This is the riskiest part, trying to get this over without ripping it. So I'm going to do that off camera, but I'm going to take my time because also by applying lots of force to it, I could damage the head. So at this point, I just want to get this off, not damaging the head. All right, we managed to peel that back relatively easily and you can see the state of it. There's nothing left. All that's left is that little covering that they put over. Maybe the top of the um, coconut hair. So these are the tubes I'm talking about. And in here, quite a way up, about, about that far up, about to there, you can feel the start of a tube. And that's the tubes that come from the headrest down. I know this because I've done, like I said, I did 118 months ago, I had the same problem. So I've now got to try and get some spray down there, make sure they're nice and clean. They feel quite clean. And get some spray down there, let it sit for 10 minutes, and then I'm going to start trying to tap it off and see where we go. There we are, guys. I'm going to get the, the, the um, top of the, the headrest, is the word I was looking for. So what I ended up doing was um, spraying, spraying some penetrating oil down this way. And then putting my hand underneath here, not pressing on this too much because this, you can see it's, I don't know if you can see on there, but it's got little cracks for me where it's just starting to perish on the surface over the years of age. So I did that and then just wiggled it up and down with my hand underneath, pulling up, push it back down, pull it up, push it back down, spray a bit more, try and wiggle in one side. Once one side was free, we could do the side and then the boat, it just suddenly jumped out. It took me maybe five minutes. So not too bad, not too badly rusted in that at all. So fabulous, now we can take that top off. There's some plastic inserts in the top of here. Just got to take out. Um, try not to break them. You can get replacements for those if you do break them, but I'm gonna get a screwdriver underneath, just work my way around. That cracking noise is just coconut hair. And just see if I can work him out, because you've got to work him out so you can get the material off and you've got to have it off for when you put the new one on so either way it's got to come off i'm just gonna get a screwdriver now and see if i can work him out all right managed to get him out now he's come out there's nothing on there holding him in just clicked sort of clicked in and a bit of a tight fit you just got to get a big screwdriver i'm trying to show you what i use i use this big screwdriver here and I get him on get him in and underneath and just keep wiggling it up bit by bit by bit bit of spray if you need it don't try and brush it you'll break it um that should be reusable happy days if it did break it like i said you can buy new ones they are an available item once you get your two clips out and the second one came out much much easier i don't know why i just did then that's it you can take your you can take your um cover off and you're left with this all you do now is take all the crap off this right we're starting on the base so that what you can see here is i've tipped the base upside down i've leaned up against a step so that you can see what's going on i've been and got me a phone holder so you can see I can have both my hands free. So this is holding in a slightly different way. Um, and you can see how the material comes around and it tucks into, into the frame. So what you have to do is you have to push down onto the springs, like that, take the tension off the material, and then you can pull the material back out where it's been pushed in, and you'll find I want to get this back piece out this is the back of the seat this is the only part that's got material and the rest is all it's the only part that's got the twining material and the rest is all um hot forks so it's got like a almost like a heavy duty cardboard sewn into it and that's what pushes back in so as i was saying i've taken all this off really nice and simple but these parts here where it goes into there and into there you can't get to them and they won't you can't lift them up it's going to be virtually impossible to fit the new one so looking at it, we're going to take these off. Four screws here, Allen keys, not a problem. But the issue will be that this mechanism is attached to the sort of plate, but also goes through there. So we might have to disassemble that mechanism as well. So at this point, I would recommend taking a photo um, so that you can be sure that things go back how they went back. So five mil Allen keys, these. Thankfully. 
So I've got another one up here and another one up here to do. I'll bring you back when I'm loosening them. A quick point to note. I'm just taking this front screw out of here. And this one, it's the cent there's three screw holes in this channel. And then this side is the centre hole that has the bolt in. And this side is this one on the end here. It's just something to remember so that when it's not lying up right and you think, why is that not right? That's why. That's how it should be. Taking the four screws out, next I'm just going to, if I can do this one out or not, take these springs off here. Might be able to do that one, but I'll take them two springs off there and bring you back. Right, springs off, just found this little gizmo. First I thought it was another spring, but I think now that it's like a stop to stop you from pulling it too far. It just seems to... Um, just to be a stop, just a piece of bent wire by the looks of it. I'm hoping I can, I can pop him off as well. Give me a second. What I'm surprised about this piece is there's absolutely nothing holds it in place. Just flopping about. But it's kind of all locked in because of these, so I'm going to have to take these sides off to get that out. But you see here, we've got a spring mechanism. So we've got to make sure we've got some loading in that. That, that's loaded, I feel that, trying to spring up. So we'll probably stay, stay together, but that side. We didn't have a spring on. They'll just come off, so we'll take them off. And then that means that this can all come off as one piece. We don't get, we don't get confused, because we've got a side with a spring on. We've got a side with a gearing on. Okay. Right, I think I'm going to try and leave that on. Don't see any point in taking it off unless it falls off. Well, it might be easier to get that on. But we'll come. We'll see. We'll see when we start rebuilding it whether we need to, whether we need to mess about with that or not. Now that we've got that off, you can see what I was talking about. They were in the way. There's no way we were going to get that out of there. If that plate was holding it in. So now we've got a bit stripped down other than the cleaning up. You can see that actually here we've got some of the original horse hair at the back where it's not been so worn. There are people's posteriors aren't going to have to break it down so much. So originally CW would put a sponge underneath and then they would have horse hair on top of the sponge and then they would have this on the top. Very almost uh, low quality wool. So guys, we've got that uh, cleaned off as much as we need to. If this had been a nice sunny summer's day, I might have pressure washed it and left it out in the sun for 10 minutes to dry, but it, you know, it's the middle of winter, it's freezing cold, it'll never dry, and I don't want it to go any rustier. What we're gonna do is cover this with a material that protects the coconut hair that's gonna go on top of it from being damaged by these springs moving up and down. So what I purchased a long while back now, is this, it's like a leatherette, faux leather or whatever you want to call it. It's quite, quite robust. You know, it's really takes some abuse. Don't really care about the colour, just went into um, a local material shop and just got um, the cheapest one I can get my hands on that looked like it would do the job. And all I'm going to do is lie that onto there and just chop it out slightly bigger than it needs to be. When I come back, I'll, I'll show you what I've done. Right guys, what we've got is we've got under there is the thing, and then I'm just laying this piece of material over much bigger than I need. And all I really want to do is just secure it in place so it don't flop about. And so what I've been doing is just putting a staple, sta finding a spot where I can go, put a staple in stapling it through sometimes what you find you have to do sometimes is just out those pieces bend over because it's not an industrial stapler that I've got but if I had an industrial stapler it might make my whole life a lot easier so I'm gonna do that all the way around 
Now what this does, it does make this part a little bit thicker, which is what we grip onto. I mean, but um, so you, you want to be careful around your corners and make sure that you're not making the corners too big because of the way that the... So you can see here, I'm just put a staple in there. I've had to help that on my fingers a bit. Make sure it folds over underneath because it's really hard to get the staples in some, in some spots because of the framework gets in the way. Now I'm just cutting it until I can see a corner. So I can feel the corner and I'm just going around the corner. And then when I come around that corner I'm just cutting it off out of the way. I've done the same here. Not worried about that bit sticking out or anything like that, don't worry. This bit in the middle is the main bit that's doing its job. And you can see how slack that is, that's how you want it. And you're just stopping those parts from driving through. Right, so that's the seat covered with the leatherette protective material. Little, it's a little bit short there where I've cut it a bit too tight, but I'm not worried. Um, you can see I've just put staples in. Again, they're just normal staples, they're not super secure. Look underneath, you can see. There. and it, you know it's not super tidy or super pretty and I'll probably need to just trim that piece out of there um, and you can trim these pieces down if, you, if you're not happy with them they're not going to hurt anything they're not going to affect the spring they're going to be fine but you'll see why it doesn't really matter in, on the next stage now so we're going to put the horse hair on now or the coconut uh, fibres as it is when that goes on it'll pinch this in place and it won't move anyway the staples are there just to keep it in place while we fit it because it's quite a quite a tight fit so here we've got the horse hair well i keep calling it horse hair but it's not it's if it's got a rubbery feel to it, it's quite obviously there's some rubber glue in there on it and put it all together and all around there's a lip it's so quite simply you've got to pop that onto there and then you can see this you've got to manhandle the lip over which is all right when you put it in this side, but then you've got to try and stretch it over on that side and it becomes more and more difficult each time you do it. The more and more you get in, the more you've got to... That side. I'm afraid there's only one way to do that, and this is brute force, and it's going to be almost impossible for me to film it, so I'll come back when it's done. Right, guy, finally got it on. I'd like to say, oh, there's a technique to this and there's a tip I can give you on how to get it on there. But there isn't. Although if there isn't, if there is, I don't know, it's just a wrestle. Be prepared to trap your fingers about ten times. But when it's on, it's on. So I can't go any further at the minute until um, my new cover comes in. Well, my new cover comes... Well, actually, I can. That's what we're going to do. I said I wasn't going to put anything on this. I'm just going to leave it like that. But, but I found some material. Oh, I forgot I had, so I'm going to put that on. Just if you put your hand on this, it's quite it's quite grippy. It's got almost a rubbery texture to it. It's like the comb, it's all been rubber coated. And that makes it hard hard to put uh, the cover on and also not very comfortable to sit on. So we're just going to put a really, really fine covering over the top. We're going to have to glue it on, I think. All right, guys, I've just cut out this piece of this material that's a bit bigger than I need. It's kind of like a felt. Um, I can't remember what it is. It just look, looks like a felt. Um, I seem to remember that I purchased something online from a company and they sent me this instead of what I actually asked for. When I got in touch with them, they just sent me um, what I actually asked for and said they didn't want this back, so I kept it. I think it's some sort of lining for the back of a car or a car, something like that, soundproofing or insulation. But it's perfect. This sort of material, not very thick, quite soft. And what it'll do is it'll just smooth out that roughness. So when you're sitting on it, you won't feel that roughness. And also, it'll just plump out the push in a bit. Uh, you saw on the original one, the VW, uh, original VW suits that I took apart, they had like a photo. Uh, it's almost like wool. So that's the prop, I can't remember what it's called, the proper stuff to buy. I'll see if I can find the information out and maybe put it on, on the uh, video. But I'm going to use this. Now, instead of trying to cut it to exact size, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray some spray some glue onto this. And then I'm going to put this on over the, over the top like that. Let that set overnight, come back in the morning. I might take it in the house where it's a bit warm because it's a bit cold down here. 
and then I'll just trim it. Make sure I'm overing it a bit better at the front because you want it to go round. The back, it doesn't matter so much because we know that the seat, you're only sitting on it to there. But you want it to go round there where your legs go round. And then um, I'll just trim it back. This is just to the size. Make sure you get, get it nice and rounded on the corners like that. Glue it down. So I'm just going to get some spray on uh, contact adhesive. There we go, just going to put some of this on. Put plenty on because it's not a very smooth surface. Instructions say to wait 10 minutes. But I'm probably just going to stick it straight on. My experience with these things is that they usually work anyway. I'm going to leave them as long as I'm going to leave them. It's almost like um, a Velcro effect. You've got the sticky hooks in the of the coconut. It seems to like hook onto the felt bit. Like I can feel that's actually sticking. Just want to make sure that I've got nice rounded corners and there's no creases in them corners. be lovely when it's dry I'll turn the this indoors now into the house overnight because it's like I say it's winter and I don't think the glue will set very well when the temperatures right this is the back piece also got a few staples in it you see it's just wrapped it's not super tidy enough it's really loose the, the idea of being really loose is that it won't inhede, it won't heed, impede the coconut from uh, pressing back where it needs to press, but it will protect the coconut from, you know, sharp edges digging into it, which is what we all what we want from it. I mean, I've put it around this way with the shiny side, but you can put it shiny side down, it doesn't really matter. Um, again, I've tried to make sure the corners, any cornery bits. Need to look at that one again i feel like he's not right because when you're trying to push it in to this coconut matting it's quite tight so you want to try and make sure your corners can get right in there so i'm just going to tidy that corner up a little bit more i can't go any further now until my uh, parts arrive so see you when my parts arrive guys still waiting for a few bits to come in so just cleaning up some of this metal work for about the noise just using the general to get into some of the places that are a bit harder to get to this is one of the, this is the part of the mechanism for, for taking the seat backwards and forwards. Just took the spring off here. Let me just turn it off a second. Just took the spring off there so we're getting behind there and I shall probably put a little bit of oil on the back of there. But up, first of all I just want to clean it all off so I'm just getting a wire brush. I'm using the Dremel for in, in the little tiny spots like that but don't mess about with a little Dremel like that to do all these big bits. Just got one of these off me. I can just put on a normal pistol drill and just get them and then I'm just going to knock all the rust back and then just give it a quick spray with some black spray paint. There we go, I just um, finished rubbing them back, just you know, a quick light spray with some black spray paint. I'm not trying to go, you know, get a professional finish or anything, it's just to try and prevent any rust. Right, it's a day or so later, as you can see. My felt interior has glued on, I've trimmed it a bit tidy around the edges so that it's not massively overhanging. The glue's taken and my cover has arrived. I've got the cover on over the over the seat but it's not over the metal. I found finding that I'm having to sort of get a really good piece of material and push the whole thing and pull it. Keep pulling it, trying. Trying to force that material to sit where it want, where it should sit.
right we're in the back <clears throat> so hopefully now it should be a case of standing on it pushing all the rest in and working my way around and see if you can see what's going on. There we are guys, covered. Hard work to say the least. Right guys, starting to rebuild the base of the seat. I tapped out the four holes here just because they were a bit rusty. One, two, three, four. And I've cleaned out the threads on the bolts as well for later. First thing that you put back is this this bar you slide it in from the top lying flat and then you can attach this piece like so and then don't forget to put your stop on if you've got one and then the two springs okay brilliant i'll bring you back for the next phase in a second when i sussed it all out so guys looking at it like this that's the front of the seat the back of the seat This one, it's got the uh, retaining mechanism on. You can see that way around if you like. Bit of, bit of oil around the back of there, so make sure I don't have any problems. Bit of grease actually. He's going to go this side. Okay, we'll leave him there. So that means the one with a little catch on. He's going to go this side. And obviously, this one. Is going to go in between the two with the teeth towards the left and the spring towards the right. So we've got to this stage where we've put this left hand side on with the, the one with the adjuster on. And you have to kind of put it into position, put it across here, light across here, slide that this runner down, bolt it. Um, what you have to watch out for is the leather it tends to this new seat's got more it's got more leather there so it just makes it hard for, for that to bolt down so you might have to just bend the leather with a bit of a, with a bit of um shallop, with a bit of brute force so that kind of left hand side is in and if you're not careful it springs back out like so but you can just pull the handle up and just wiggle it back about and go back in when you've got it in you've got to get this side in so let me show you up see if i can do that for you i think i've just had a simple way of doing it so first of all just make sure this side is back in again 
make sure we rotate it so that this piece is as far forward as it can be so that's the minimum spring tension minimum spring tension we've got to get this on which is tricky go through the big hole pull it round drop it into that small hole there and if you can see if you can keep if you keep that inside on there and that down actually spring tension but you can't do that because you can't get over this so go that way to get it over the clip but then you come off your spring tension you can't come off your spring tension so you've got to try and keep your spring tension up on and what tends to happen is it pops off there but don't panic take a screw and just start it at this end Start. I'm gonna not tighten it down, but nip it down. Now the problem I've got now is all the spring tension, but I'm hoping that with a bit of. So what I'm trying to do now is get that piece to line back up. So what, I, what what happened there was I had to tip it onto its side. It was I couldn't get it to line up on when it was lying down, but I left everything how it was, and then I've, I've um, tipped on its side like this, the, the, the adjuster side down, the spring side up, and then I've moved these pieces around and, and aligned them, so it's now in. Well, welcome back everyone, it might have only been a few seconds for you guys, but it's actually been three weeks since you last saw me. Put this leatherette material onto the back piece of the seat. I've been waiting for this part to arrive. Um, I got this part cheap because someone bought it for another project or for a project and they didn't use it. Um, and I got it off eBay, but it seems like they were very reluctant to actually ship it to me. But eventually I got them to ship it to me. Um, and it's taken about three weeks for it to arrive. It looks pretty good. Um, I'm not sure the original would have had these chunks missing out of it. I think these holes would have been solid originally. I think maybe they've put it on, took, cut it off something. I don't know. I think I'll be fine. I'll, I'll be happy with that. I got it for 30 quid, including delivery. So um, it really isn't that big a deal. I'm hoping that this will go on a lot easier because it's not, it's not a lip that goes all the way around. It's kind of a lip on the top and a lip on the bottom. So let's just see if I can do it first time for the camera. It's just kind of sitting on there, no problem. In fact, it's almost, it's almost like a, tr a struggle to get it to stay on. It's so loose compared to the, uh, the bottom piece. It's a doddle. The bottom piece was you know, ridiculously difficult. Oh, be careful of those, that was sharp. Yeah, so it kind of just sits there, it doesn't really want to stay on. And maybe this will count this bottom piece. That's it, get this bottom piece, this little bottom lip over, and that will help it want to stay on. Just again, watch these here because they are very vicious. So, yeah, they, they look like they're, they're lining up vaguely. Um, which is fine because we've got to put the cover on and then we can put the plastic inserts down there and they will hold every, that will hold the cover and everything in place put the cover down the back um, first of all I want to um, like I did with the base I just want to put that nice felt material on so we're going to get that now so left that down the shed so guys got me a bit of material cut roughly to size it's, a, it's oversized but it's like before but it doesn't matter because we'll trim it once it's finished being glued. Give this a nice coating of impact adhesive. Oh, on, the, on the kitchen floor, they will come off, don't worry. There you go. Push it down. Try to stick any creases out of it before it sets. 
Right, so we're all set now. Glue's set, so if you look, you can just see where it's sticking. And I just want to leave, I don't want to come all the way over to the front edge because you'll end up with like a lip. But I'm not worried about going all the way back to there. Somewhere in between is fine. You go up against where it's, you just leave a little, a little bit loose from where it's glued down. And hopefully we won't have any problems with that. Of holes where they are. I'm going to put a little bit of glue under there just to glue that, glue that edge down because I don't want that catching me out and, and then, we'll, then we'll get the cover and we'll start fitting the colour. So we're back, I've got the cover. Um, what you'll notice with the cover is it doesn't have any holes for the head rest at the top so we're going to have to make those ourselves um, which we'll do at the end because once we've found the position where our uh, Cover's going to sit, then we'll be able to just feel with our finger where the holes are and just use a Stanley knife and just be really careful with it. We'll work that out as we go. What we have to be careful with with this is this is quite springy and it gets tight on here and here. And what you don't, when you're pulling it down, you've got to watch that this bit doesn't rip apart because there's a lot of force on it. So as you're pulling it down, you have to try and hold that together. I don't know if I'll be able to show that on the camera or not, but we'll just get straight into it. And we'll just see how we go. I'm just going to just try and start off by just trying to pull it further, like a, like a jumper over your head. This is where this material really helps because that um, Coconut fibre is really grippy and it, wouldn't, it just wouldn't want to sleeve over. I'm trying to piece that together as I pull it down so I'm not putting untold, untold force onto, onto there so you've got supporting it, pushing it against my knee, pulling that in and just trying not to put too much force on it. This is really doing my head in. It's gone down there a whole lot easier than I was expecting it to so far. I'd say I'm past the worst at the tight part of the top. So it's now getting looser now, so I'm past that tight spot. So I managed to get past there without damaging that, which is brilliant. See, I'm still way short, loads of slack there, so I have to keep pulling on this. Watching legs on those spikes. Now, oops, I'm going to get to a point where this seam here comes over there, and this seam here comes over these spikes. Now if you remember on the old ones, the one that I removed, the original, if you can see this now guys, I'm a bit close to the camera there, but the original one, I said don't throw these away because um, I don't know if the new ones come with them. Well the new ones don't come with them. Um, they're both the same length so I don't think it matters too much which one you put where. The one that's on the plated side has holes at the ends of the material so that you can sleeve them through. Whereas this is sealed, so we're going to have to make our, our own hole and sleeve it across, um, which could be interesting, an interesting problem for us. It's also got to about there and it's catching so we've just got to be careful take our time keep our patience 
I don't do anything too rash and just work out at the end. There we are. So that's going to give me something I can pull on that. I know that I need that to come over those spikes and then those spikes come through and then this one goes over those spikes as well. And then we bend the spikes over and that's on. And then we can start worrying about the headrest. So guys, I'm back. I've got me a little, uh, just a little crafty knife thing. It didn't have to be a Stanley blade. And, and some pliers, because these, these pins are going to want to be straight. You want them pointing up like that. Not, not sort of like this one, which is all wonky. You're not going to be able to get them, at, you know, you want that point. When you're pulling that hard, probably at the limits of what you can, strength-wise what you can do, you want that to penetrate through nicely. This chair is a little bit rusty really and probably should have had powder coated, but in the end I had the time having to wait for those parts, didn't I? So, I've sl here I've threaded through this end of the material one of these rods that was on the previous chair and I've threaded it through. Um, if you haven't got these, if, you, if you're doing this from scratch and you haven't got a, a rod, I don't know what diameter that is. 3mm maybe. Then you'd have to measure the distance from there to there to get an idea of... I mean, it does have a curve in it, but that's probably because it's been sat in the chair for so long. You can probably start with a straight piece. Um, I don't know where you get them from. But anyway, what I'm trying to explain to you, I've got you closer so that you can see. This one's got to go into inside this seam. But there's no hole. So I'm going to make a hole here with my craft knife. And then I'm going to thread this through there. And then what we do is we get those, with those rods, you pull, the, pull it all the way. It's got to come all the way around and onto here so that the spike goes through the material and behind the rod so that the, so that the rod stops the material from ripping. And the same with this. Um, and it's tidier if the bottom bit goes on first. You put the bottom bit on first, and the top bit goes over the top and hides hides it all. So when you're looking at the back of the seat, it looks tidy. So I'm going to attempt to do that. So that went really, really well. I've just made a little nick, and I've just pushed him through, worked him through slowly. And I'm just going to keep pushing him until he disappears into the hole. I might just leave him visible so I can see that what I'm working with and so it doesn't move and it's gone all the way through to here. I can fit my finger, so that's gonna be that one seems like he'll pull over there really easily with a bit of extra force. This is gonna be the challenging one. So I'm gonna set you down over here again and you can watch me struggle. And see how I get on. I'm gonna One more final pull. I'm going to go for a middle one first, and I've got these pliers as well. Make sure your tools are clean. Yeah, so that went over, but then very quickly bent the pin. I'm going to have to try and support it. That went really, really well and then ended really, really badly. I don't know if you can see this on the camera, I haven't got a
Wow. So the situation that we have now is that this one's trying to poke through. And I can feel the point then I can have them through. It feels like the point's fell a bit over on this one. I really don't want to take it back off. I feel like I might be able to just help that. Burst through there. That's it, so you can see it's not a point. So I'll have to kind of help it come through because the point's folded over. Point has come through on this one, but the material is really quite tough. It doesn't want to. It doesn't want to be cut, which is good for the long term. There we are. Again, I think it looks like the point's kind of folded up on itself a little bit. At least through. He's terrific. Try and get the point back so that I can use it for the next one. There we are. You can see why you need that metal. There's so much force, so tight. Without that piece of metal inside the material, it would just it would just rip it. So if you if you are doing this and you haven't got those. Going to be worth your while. I am considering whether or not I mean, it looks so tight and nice, look like it's going to get any tighter. I'm just considering whether I need to get these in. I feel like the amount of force I'm going to have to apply to get them in is unreasonable. So, thing to think about when you're doing this as well is if you slip, your foot's not going to go straight onto that spike. I would say you'd be watching me struggle, I'll probably fast forward a lot of this. It just bites that spike that way a little bit. That did seem to help. Maybe I'll do that. I mean, that was a considerable amount of force that I've applied there. You can hear me probably breathing quite hard. I'm biting it slightly towards that. I'm putting my foot on there, which helps compress the springs, takes a little bit of tension up material. Also gives me something to pull against. I'm 
I'll just try and get that. Perfect. Now you can see how tight that is now. Beautiful and tight. I've just got to repeat the same for the back piece. This does seem to be famous last words, but it does seem to be a little bit less tension in this. I'm not going to try and use my fingers because this material damages a lot more easily than the uh, tweedy material does because it's that leveretti type of material. Um, and it's going to be visible, it's going to be on show potentially depending on which seat you're doing this for Not what I wanted, I didn't want to make multiple holes in this. I think it will stand up to it, this material. I'm going to have to bite the bullet and go with the pliers. It's the only way I think I'm going to get enough force. Seems that going squarer is better with these. So I just want to slide back off if you bias it towards them. So first one through. Definitely got a sweat on now. So I'm doing that, I'm trying to squeeze as much of the point through as I can, grab as much of the point with the pliers as I can, and pull on it and bend it over, try and prevent that. So there, those two are they're through. I can work on these two now, I'll do the same. And the points are pointing down, so they're not going to catch anybody. You might be around the back of the chair for any reason. Not that somebody should be around the back of your chair in this particular seat. Might be doing a driver's seat, so it's the same principle. I hope that I'm getting across to you just how tough this is. Um, it really is a task not to be taken lightly. Um, every stage of the reupholstering of this has been tough. 
reupholstering the bottom wasn't easy, might look easy on the video, but I've edited out a lot of swearing. Um, I'm a big strong man, relatively, compared to say the average Joe or lady if she was trying to have a go at this might find herself not having enough grip strength. Wow, so it's on, it's tight. We have a nice tight front. It's becoming apparent that the hardest part of this whole process, it's not stripping it down, it's not trying to rebuild it or anything like that. It's it's trying to reupholster it. It's such a physical battle with sort of everyday layman tools. Might be worth doing a bit more internet research and seeing what professionals do in this industry and what tools they use welcome back guys we've got to put these back into the top of the chair so this is the top of the seat of the chair the back of the chair the tubes i can feel the tubes the tubes come up and and I can, the metal's there so i can feel that the tubes are going to be around about there so i'm going to use a little knife and i'm going to cut roughly where i think it is not a massive hole in case I'm in the wrong place, and I can get my little finger in, and I can start trying to work out where we are, and I can get the hole in the right place, and then I can wiggle this in, and sort of pop it into the top of the tube, and it'll be fine. So I'm going to do that off camera, because I can't do that hole in it, and I'm not sure how it's going to look. So, Right, we're back. Hole there, where I've tried to feel it. It's not big enough yet, which is good, because I fit, now I've put my finger in, I can, at an angle, really, it wants to be more, that's where the hole is there, so... I need to open it up a bit more in this area, Just, it doesn't matter because look how much bigger, I don't actually know if the camera can pick up down there, but this is a bit bigger yet, so I've got plenty of room. So I'm going to open it up a bit more this way and see if I can get more close to the hole. Back in a sec. So it goes into the material now, but look, it's a little bit off the centre where the hole is, so I'm just going to wiggle it around and try and see if I can find where it wants to go. Look. There we are guys, finally got it on. Sorry I didn't quite get the video you're doing it, but it was very difficult, as every other aspect of this has been. One takeaway I will take from this video guys is that it, it, don't take this lightly. Don't think, oh, I'm just going to pull that over there and do that. You be prepared for some wrestling. Be prepared to work, you know, work a few things out. But, not oh, bad it is it, not bad is it that? Not that bad at all. I'm happier with the back than I was with the bottom. Feels like that's fit, that's better fitted. The bottom to me was just, I mean, this was hard, but the bottom was even harder. I might not come out in the video, with, but the bottom was so hard. Anyway, guys, I'll show you how to bolt it back together. So here's my little hack to getting the back on easy. First thing you do is put the bottom into the, into the van, so we're on the runners. It's pretty easy, you just have to watch this catch. Said. I'm just going to bring it forward a little bit so that we can uh, get this lock off forward. See if it's needed to use me other hand. So, here, just here, if you can make it out, on both sides, see it probably might be able to see it better there, it's like a little receptacle. Sorry about the dodgy videoing, guys. And here, the bottom of the this is the seat upside this is the back of the seat upside down the bottom that is what goes into the receptacle there and there so you have to drop those into to those slots and then pull it around and then it back through those holes which when the bottom of this seat is like not attached to anything is really difficult but I'm hoping it will be really easy when it is attached 
try and put that receptacle in there, that one. It seems like it's too wide. You have you have to squeeze it. So now you can see the back of the seat is in on that side, it's on the same on the other side. Now it's really difficult to do if the bottom's not secure. Because the bottom's there, it makes life so much easier. Now what we've got to do is keep that seated in there and line that up, which is a whole lot easier. Again, because you can just keep a downward force on the back of the seat, keep a downward force on it and then just pull it forward. Get your screws in. Once you've got them in, just remember the eight mil Allen key. Do them up, till the tight, but it won't it won't be flush up against the face. There'll be a little gap there, that's normal. Because that actually wants to swivel, that's a swivel point. And you've got to get your covers. This one you can see is the right one because you've got a little clip on there. See what you do. So I'm going to show you that again. So you get your covers. It's got a little clip on there so you know he lines up with that. But these have to slot in from the top. Just up. Just slot it down. Take it in. I'm not sure I can do it one handed, but you get the idea. And the other side's similar. There we are, guys. New seat in. Everyone. I don't think it's an exact match. That, that seat there's original. I repaired it. The seat covers were in good enough condition for me to uh, salvage them, so I salvaged them with a bit of stitching. I did the same as with that as I've done with this, but the um, this one here, you can see this actually powder coated all the framework because it's more visible because the, because it, the runners are on. Um, so that's the captain's chair, so it's, on, it's slightly raised and the runners are visible. This one, the runners are not so going to be so visible, so I'm not so worried. So I'm going to have that car put it up to there. So most of the metal work that's visible. I don't think it'll I think it'll take another 40 years before I have a rust problem with the seat, so I'm not worried. If you are thinking about doing this, it's hard. Physically hard. It's not mentally hard. Take your time, think about what you're doing, it's easy enough to do, but physically the strength required to do some of it with a you know with sort of everyday tools is harder than you might imagine. And watch out because these replica seats are not the same. Or these replica seat covers aren't identical to the original. Don't care what anybody says. That's an original. That's not an original. Pretty straightforward. If you want to see some, if you see the note to do to do door cards as a video on YouTube, watch one of my other videos to see that. And I might be doing a video about the carpet soon as well. I'm going to be putting on. I'm going to get rid of this black stuff. This is what normally would be black here. I've ripped it all because It's just beyond. It's not salvageable, you can see there, it's looking a bit tatty and it was worse than that on this side. It's not too bad on there, but it's all going to get ripped out and it's all going to be um, this sort of carpet. Again, this, this I, I did I did clean this and so I tried to salvage it, but it's just beyond salvage, this carpet, so watch out for that one. Thank you very much.